It's a man called Sting, January 9th, 2020. It was last updated. It was before that. I'll even give you the date, a little bit of the history. No doubt one of the most popular wrestlers of the 1990s was Sting. He was one of my favorites, just like so many. I was a huge fan of the Stinger. His popularity, let me tell you something to our listeners, it started to grow after the match that put him on the map was against the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Style and profiling has all the ladies, Space Mountain, at their famous Clash of the Champions of 1988. That match created a deep rivalry between Sting and Flair. At the 1990 Great American Bash, Sting would win the World Heavyweight Championship after beating Flair. The crowd in Baltimore went crazy as Sting celebrated with the other WCW babyface. Sting had it. What we're talking about, he had charisma and the look to be successful. He stood out. He was different. The colorful face paint really made him stand out. His character, that gimmick, his wardrobe was bright and flashy and oftentimes matched his face paint. The many different colors and faces of Sting, the Stinger. He had the surfer look, that California Beach look. The fans were excited to see their new hero. As the NWA transitioned to WCW after Jim Crockett Promotions and Ted Turner had bought the remainder of the NWA territory, Sting was growing more and more popular. He sure was. There was no doubt. Fans were rabid for this man. Yeah, I'm still in lines from good old Jim Ross and mean Gene Okerlund. But hey, if you're going to steal, steal from the best. That is so true. And he was the top babyface for the company, WCW. Sting took part in legendary feuds with some of the all-time greats. Listen to this. His matches against Big Van Vader and the Great Muda were all-time classics. That's how they rank. They were just awesome. Sting showed he could work with a lot of different styles. Anyone, even the bigger guys like a Vader we just talked about. And then would go on to have five-star matches even more with the likes of the total package Lex Luger. Cactus Jack, who we know as Mick Foley, later became Mankind during the Attitude Era for Vince McMahon in the WWE. And of course, the nature boy, Ric Flair, that put him on the map. Sting was the one and only true WCW guy. That's what earned him being the franchise player for World Championship Wrestling. As many of the wrestlers were leaving to go up north for Vince McMahon and his World Wrestling Federation at the time, now World Wrestling Entertainment as we know it, Sting was quietly setting himself up to be that franchise of this company. The household name that you would come to love and cheer on. When Ted Turner and Eric Bischoff decided they wanted to compete with the machine that was the WWE, they knew it would take more than just stars they had on their roster. So just as the WWF had been taking top talent from a lot of the territories, WCW decided to retaliate and took two of the WWE's biggest stars in the immortal Hulk Hogan and the macho man Randy Savage. Sting would instantly become friends with Hogan, but in the process, he would slightly take a back seat. He was still a top guy, though, and it was focused in major stories, but Hulk Hogan felt like the new face of the company, naturally, with his more internationally and worldwide known status, with all due respect to the Stinger. This would change as WCW launched Monday Nitro in 1995, along with Nitro would come Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, the Outsiders. From the WWE, Scott Hall was then, his gimmick was Razor Ramon. Kevin Nash was Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Wrestling would change forever as Hall and Nash formed the NWO, this New World Order faction with Hogan. Sting was the man leading the charge against the NWO as he formed a team with Luger and Savage to wrestle Hall Nash and their mystery partner, this third man that was unknown at the time. And we know it to be that third man was Hulk Hogan. In one of the greatest swerves and heel turns of all time, Hulk Hogan joined the NWO and later would become Hollywood Hulk Hogan and be the bad guy. And boy, was he great. Hogan proved he could be a baby face and a heel all at the same time. His versatility as his gimmick and character. This night was the night that changed the game forever in sports entertainment. And that is so true. There's no denying or doubt about that. Over the next few months, Sting would go on to still challenge the NWO, but his WCW mates were starting to not trust him in this process. There was some doubt there. The NWO had a fake Sting, for crying out loud, that looked like Sting, to his credit, and the commentators and his friends were questioning his allegiances. 
talking about Sting. This led to a War Games match where Sting was the team with Luger, Flair, and Arn Anderson, the Enforcer, Double A, to wrestle the NWO, their team. Sting didn't show up until the end of the match where he came in and laid out the entire NWO roster, cleaning house on them, beating them down. He proceeded to tell Team WCW to stick it and left, walked out of the building. Over the next few months, the NWO, we would see them. They would run rough shot over WCW, all the talent. WCW was desperately in need of that hero, that top baby face again. They needed the stinger. They chased away their biggest hero. They made their mistake to the man they relied on the most. Sting would become that hero in one of the greatest stories in wrestling history. Was it ever big and the build was worth it? That's what I miss about these kind of storylines that we're reading or going back and watching that are missing out of today's product. It's just long storylines. Sting transformed his character from that surfer look to a mysterious man who hung out in the rafters in all black with black and white face paint and an actual crow. Sting had changed. He was no longer the happy, fun, loving kind of guy. He was now this mysterious, I'm going to destroy you, Sting. Sting would come down from the rafters anytime the NWO had the advantage, the numbers on WCW. He would lay waste to as many members of the NWO that were in the ring with his famous black baseball bat in tow. He was hitting home runs, taking names, and kicking tail with Sting. This would lead to WCW's biggest main event of all time at Star K 1997. It was Sting vs. Hollywood Hulk Hogan for the WCW World Title in Washington, D.C. One of WCW's biggest matches, storylines, and pay-per-views. And Sting would win the match and become WCW World Champion again as he defeated Hollywood Hogan to win and become, like we said, the champion of World Championship Wrestling. Got it from the NWO away from that faction. Sting brought the belt back home. It was so important and such a big moment where it belonged. It sure did. Sting would stay with WCW until it closed in 2001, eventually being bought out by Vince McMahon, the competition, and the WWE. He refused to go on to the WWE because he didn't believe in their morals or how he would be used in later interviews. He would go on to TNA Wrestling where he wrestled for eight years. Sting had great feuds in TNA, Let's just talk about some of these names he had these uh, feuds with in TNA. It was Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and many more. The list goes on and on. And now look at their careers in the WWE. A Angle was already in the WWE and came to TNA. Now we've seen him back. And he's a machine, an Olympic gold medalist. For You know, that's all you need to know. The accomplishments of Kurt Angle. Sting finally made his way to the WWE in 2014 where he was rightfully inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2016 at that WrestleMania. Of course, in the 2015, we saw him face Triple H in his first WrestleMania match, something fans had dreamed of for a long time. But will we see that Sting Undertaker match? With all due respect to the game Triple H, I like the match, but I'd still like to see the Taker and the Stinger go at it with their characters and gimmicks, or maybe the Sting vs. Kane or the Fiend. That would work. Whether he was the surfer sting, the crow sting, the joker sting in TNA. Let's not forget that. Or just Steve Borden, the stinger, as an all-time. He really is. I mean, I can remember going, watching Nitro or Raw with buddies and flipping channels and kind of guessing what where's Sting going to come from next. The storyline and anticipation and surprise was so great in watching Starcade. We would have big parties with the pay-per-views. So a lot of fun and great times watching both companies. And I gotta tell you what, it was a man called Sting.